Hello, my name is Stephen Knight. This short presentation <clears throat> is looking at uh, life cycle formulas, just looking at something a little bit different on the basis of a, a question that's come up, which is about doing a formula where you've got fixed values in fields. Now, in a later presentation, I have a prototype put together that we'll run through where we'll use variable values in a field from a drop down list. But let's have a look at this particular example where we're going to have fixed values in a field. So we've got a range of fields here. We've got a quantity field just to start off. And with our quantity field, uh, it's in the object panel here on the left, we can see the value is user entered. It's optional. Uh, it could be a required field if you needed it to be. But in it, either way, it's a user entered field. It's also a numeric field. Uh, its caption is quantity. You could put what you know something more meaningful in there. We just kept it short for this demo. Uh, you could use a comb with this if you wanted to. Uh, I probably wouldn't with this particular one. Just keep it nice and simple. Uh, also, a comb is good for numbers, but where you've got numbers like uh, postcodes, for example, a comb is good for that. Uh, and actually, in that particular case, a postcode's not a numeric field anyway. It's text. So let's keep on keeping on here. So in summary, it's a numeric field, the value setting, it's user entered, optional or required, uh, required probably would be better. Uh, now, in our second field here, this is again a numeric field, it's going to be storing the price of the item, it's set to read only, so there's a drop down arrow with choices here, set to read only. Uh, and I've entered the default value, the price of an X, okay, is $10. Uh, also, what I've done here, if I uh, just uh, pop back to field, is in the patterns, I've gone into display and said, right, let's go with a, a currency format. So, the third field is a numeric field again. This is going to be the subtotal. So quantity multiplied by price is going to give us our subtotal. And that, uh, if we go to value, is again set to read only. Uh, and again, in the patterns, I've gone into display and said, look, display this as money. So we all like money. And ultimately, with the grand total down the bottom here, it's going to be the sum of these two totals. Now, this I'm keep deliberately keeping this a fairly simple model. You could get fancier with this. In fact, as I said in a later demonstration, we'll do one with a drop down for the price where you pick a product, and behind the scenes in the drop down list, it's got a numerical value for the price so that people can order. Uh, quantities of different items. But we'll start with this as just a fixed one to keep it nice and simple. Now we need to do a formula. To help us with our formulas, I'm going to the window menu, and in the window menu, I'm already showing the script editor. That's this panel at the top. We, we need the script editor for this. Then I'm going to click on my subtotal field. Uh, now with my subtotal field here, what I'm going to do is uh, go up to my events with scripts and this is going to be the calculate event and I'm also making sure over here on the right I'm set to form calc it's probably going to default to JavaScript now you can do this with JavaScript but you've got to be a bit more comfortable with your programming so I've clicked here in the uh, script editing window I'm going to hold down the control key. You'll notice I've got an arrow, little V shape when I hover over quantity and I'm going to click on quantity and then I'm going to say multiplied by, which you'd know from Excel and other products is the asterisk. And then holding down the control key again, I'm going to click on my unit price. And now I'm going to save my work and just pop across to preview 
and let's see how this goes. Now I'm in the preview, let's test this out. I've put a quantity in, I'm going to use uh, order five units of X and that's going to be $50. Now you'll notice as well, uh, we've got some read only fields here, so I can't change these. I can only come back and change my quantity. So just to summarize, let's go back to the design view. So I'm back in the design view. I want to do another subtotal, so I've selected the field. I'm just making sure I'm in form calc here in the script editor, holding down the control key, selecting quantity. Now you'll notice because we've got multiple quantity fields, uh, it's doing a little box with the one in it. Uh, you'll notice if you look on the left in the hierarchy panel, you can see that I've got quantity fields, price of item fields and subtotals that are zero, and then the second set are labelled with a one. Uh, that's the way that computers do arrays and sequences, uh, so that it starts with zero. The second set of things with the same name is set number one, set number two for the second, uh, third set. Uh, so let's go multiplied by the good news with all of that uh, notation is captivate or rather uh, life cycle looks after it for you. If I so I've said quantity one multiplied by control and click on the price. So quantity multiplied by price. Again, I'll save that. I will test it out. And we're now testing out and I'm just having a little bit of fun with Acrobat Reader. Let's go back into the design view. We'll just do that one more time. Here we go. So if I put my quantity in, I'll order four of these and they're $5 a unit, $20. If I go back to design view, you'll recall that we set the value. Now, originally on the first row, it was $10, made this one $5. So a unit of Y is worth $5. Now, the third thing we want to calculate is our grand total. So I'm on total. I'm making sure that it's uh, form calc. It's the calculate event. Holding down the control key, I can click that one plus that one. Now, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you another way to do this where you can sum everything called subtotal, uh, but we'll save that for later. So now, if I preview this again, and again, Acrobat Reader is going to crash uh, Folks, normally I'd stop and edit that out, but uh, I have such confidence that that's going to work the second time. There we go. So, not entirely sure what's going wrong there, uh, but it's not fatal. So you'll notice I'm ordering multiple quantities, three of X, four of Y, uh, $30, $20, 30 and 20 makes 50. So that's just a good simple little example there, just to recap. The key thing is in the price, because I wanted that to be fixed, I don't want the end users to set their own price, uh, I've made it read only and the default value is 10, uh, in, and it's a numeric field of course, and price of Y is $10, so numeric field, read only in the value tab, uh, default value of 5, or whatever unit you wanted it to be. Also, don't forget to use your patterns to format the result through the display. So that's a very quick little run through. I'm hoping the audio with this is OK, just my asthma is playing up a little bit tonight. But I'm hoping you found that useful. Thank you for your attention. 
Uh, that question came from uh, Julie in uh, New Zealand. So I'm hoping, Julie, that you found that useful and everybody else will find it useful as well. And thank you for your time. Hello, this is Stephen Knight. I hope you can use the material that you've just seen. I hope that we can help you solve a problem through it or that you are able to do something new that you haven't been able to do before. So where to from here? If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you will be advised of any updates, any additional video tutorials that I put up. Now, I don't get to see your email address out of that, so it's perfectly uh, confidential YouTube look after all of that. Uh, if you visit my blog, which is at trainascope.com, uh, you'll see the address in the last slide in a moment. Uh, then you'll find other information there. Uh, again, uh, updates, but additional articles that aren't on the YouTube channel. Uh, also, I am available for training throughout Australia. Uh, if you'd like some training in the subject matter of this tutorial or other things, the Office Suite, SharePoint, Acrobat, Dreamweaver or Captivate, uh, please contact me through your firm's preferred uh, training provider. I work for all the leading training providers, uh, so please feel free to book me via your, your HR department and their preferred training provider. Uh, also, uh, if you visit my blog, you'll also find a link to my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'm always happy to get feedback from people through LinkedIn, so if you've got questions about the content, uh, things you want to ask me, uh, go, to my, go to my LinkedIn uh, profile and contact me through there. Just mention in the contact message what, what the connection is, that you've seen one of my training videos, just so I know that who you are. So uh, thank you for your time and I hope you've learned something from the content today.